Some people believe that that we're passing through a defining moment in international history, that the international system moving forward is going to be quite different than the international system moving, uh, uh, looking back. Uh, I actually don't agree with that. I think that the world post-pandemic is not going to be all that different from the world pre-pandemic, that uh, we are moving into what I would call a hybrid bipolar, multipolar international system. The two big countries will be China and the United States. There will be an aspect uh, of bipolarity stemming from having two peer competitors. But we will effectively be in a multipolar world because there will be many other significant actors out there, the European Union, the Russians, the Indians, the Brazilians, uh, that are in some ways uh, independent actors, not aligning themselves clearly with either China or the United States, hedging in a, in a broader geopolitical uh, game. I don't think that the pandemic interrupts our move in that direction. I would say that in some ways it accelerates it. And even though the underlying distribution of power in my mind is not going to change dramatically as a result of the pandemic. I do think that there is a, a kind of distancing of countries from the United States, a movement toward a more multipolar system as a function of the uh, less than ideal American response, to put it nicely, to the crisis. The United States is, uh, is not uh, handling the pandemic well. The virus continues to spread. Uh, there is a, a sense that the United States simply has not risen to the occasion. President Trump has gone it alone uh, when it comes to, to the pandemic, not worked across the Atlantic or across the Pacific or, or with anybody uh, to try to deal with this. In fact, he has taken the United States away from the World Health Organization, the main international body that deals with global public health. The other thing that I think is happening that expedites the movement toward uh, multipolarity is countries are taking advantage of the fact that the United States is distracted and not doing well. I'm not sure the Chinese would have done what they've done in Hong Kong had the world not been distracted by the virus. Uh, the Russians are pushing out in the Middle East, in Africa, in Latin America. Turkey has inserted itself into, into Libya. So to some extent, what we're seeing is, is countries stepping into the, to the lurch. Uh, China uh, deepening partnership with Iran comes to mind, while the United States is in some ways missing in action. There are some uh, what I would call events that could push us in one direction or another upcoming. Uh, let me mention a few of them. The November election here in the United States, in my mind, is critical. If Biden wins, I think there will be some repair of the system, some move back toward a U.S.-led multilateral order. There will be a sigh of relief uh, in many countries, particularly in Europe that the Trump era is over. And so I think that the move toward a kind of bipolar, multipolar system will slow down. If uh, Biden comes into office, he will return to a more traditional American foreign policy. I think he will handle the pandemic uh, much more effectively and maybe restore some of the international cooperation that should be taking place. The pandemic is a scourge that affects everyone. We are all being hit by this, every country, every people. We should be coming together to, uh, to address the problem from a health perspective, a political perspective, a uh, medical perspective, but it's not happening. Some more of that may happen under a Biden administration. On the other side of the ledger, some of the things that I think uh, we need to keep an eye on are how long will the pandemic last and how deep will the economic uh, impact strike? Uh, so far, we have not seen the populists take advantage of the economic downturn. In general, centrist governments have done well in Europe, in the United States, elsewhere. The populist governments 
Bolsonaro in Brazil, Trump in the United States, have not done well and are suffering as a result. That's good news. If this economic uh, hit deepens, might the populace come on strong, let's say, next year? Could be something to keep an eye on. And then another issue is the pandemic in the developing world. Uh, we don't know exactly where this is going to go, whether there could be countries in which poor healthcare systems, high density could really lead to some very serious problems and, and instability on a, on a regional basis. So those are, are two, uh, two things to keep an eye on. Finally, uh, some people have talked about the end of globalization, globalization 2.0. We're going to decouple because of the pandemic. Uh, I don't see it. I think the world is too interdependent. Uh, financially, in terms of commodities, goods and services, trade. There will be some stepping away from globalization because of the pandemic, but nothing that I would call a radical change to the system. So in general, uh, I think when the pandemic subsides, the world that we live in won't be all that different than the world we would have been in without the pandemic. We're just going to get there quicker and probably in a more bumpy fashion. Thank you very much.